Hey friends and fam, it's John and this is JMartCast, your destination for Monday morning insight to improve your physical and financial health. Spoiler alert, develop a personal movement practice and learn as much as you can about Bitcoin. Let's start with a quote this week. A healthy man wants a thousand things, but a sick man wants only one. This particular proverb reflects the idea that good health allows for a multitude of desires and pursuits, while ill health narrows one's focus to the essential and most immediate needs. So do not wait till ill health to make your physical and financial health a high priority. Start today by making JMartCast part of your Monday morning routine. I keep these episodes to the JMartCast pretty short, and I'm going to follow suit with that this week as well. Very short episode, most likely. So for the physical health component, let's talk about that a little bit. I'm going to give three small things you can think about and do throughout your day-to-day life to improve your physical health. The first two are kind of connected. Okay, the first one is tongue posture, tongue position. Where do you put your tongue when you're not speaking? It's very important to have your tongue placed on the roof of your mouth, gently pressing up against your palate, I guess. Um, Not just the tip of the tongue too, but the base of the tongue as well, spreading both up towards the teeth and back towards the back of the throat and the sides as well. And as you do that, you will find that that makes breathing, especially diaphragmatic breathing, where you're using your entire abdomen and your rib cage to breathe, a lot easier. So by placing the tongue on the roof of your mouth, you will make the mechanism of breathing much easier to perform, but also much easier to perceive and adjust and that's what i recommend is then once you have your tongue placed on the roof of your mouth is then you do some conscious breathing where you're paying close attention to and also guiding your breathing and you can do this by dividing the breathing cycle into four phases there's the inhalation then the pause after inhalation followed by exhalation and the pause after exhalation And you can assign a specific amount of time to perform each uh, phase by. The most basic one is called box breathing, where you assign about four seconds for each phase. Therefore, the total cycle takes uh, 16 seconds, right? Uh, Four seconds per phase. So something like this, you breathe in for four. And then you would just repeat that over and over again while you have the tongue on the roof of your mouth, obviously. And so conscious breathing is the second physical health advice for today. Um, It's very underrated, the impact this will have. In my opinion, this is the most impactful thing one can do to improve their health is to take time to do some conscious breathing. And so the benefits are many many to be named obvious one is of course stress reduction which all of us obviously could use given the stressful times we live in but not only that there's also improved respiratory function from practicing deep and controlled breathing you can definitely improve your lung capacity and improve your body's ability at exchanging oxygen and um, all the respiratory muscles those can strengthen as well so You can overall just have a better, more efficient breathing pattern through practicing doing conscious breathing. It's also good for uh, just improving your mind-body connection. Oftentimes, if you have some sort of pain, it's really good for pain management. And also, I find with the 
increase in relaxation. It can help with sleep quality as well. So there's no shortage of reasons to not do conscious breathing, to develop a breathing practice. All right, and the third and last physical health advice for today is when you're practicing locomotion, such as walking or running, think about this cue, head over foot. As you're walking or running, think about having your head directly over your foot every time you place your foot down. I have been doing this for my running practice for the half marathon. And also while I'm walking, as often as I can remember, I am trying to keep my head over my foot. Now, you don't have to over-exaggerate the movement. You can do it quite subtly so that people don't look at you and think you're walking funny. But it's an amazing way to really feel the rotational movements that you can create with your body through your spine. This comes to me from the work of David Weck, who's the inventor of the BOSU ball, and he's a really passionate and smart trainer. And I've learned a lot from him. And by incorporating this, I felt like I've upped my running game and I'm going to be really well prepared for this half marathon that I've got coming in October. But yeah, the main point of keeping your head over your foot is the fact that by doing so, you remain in balance when you are landing that way when your foot hits the ground rather than using your energy to keep you stabilized you're already stable because you're balanced and then you can use those forces to be more productive and propel you forward so apply that next time you're practicing a little bit of running it's very subtle just move your head slightly to one side and then slightly to the other every time you step forward with that foot on that side i promise you you'll feel a difference try doing it by walking first and then even try doing it by uh, doing a light jog going up a set of steps. I find that is a really good way to make you understand it. And then uh, once you have a good understanding of it through those two uh, modalities that I just explained, then try doing it while you're running and you'll really get it. All right, so with that said, let's move on to some financial health talk So when it comes to this part of the show, it's basically about Bitcoin. So before we get into it, I like to do a Bitcoin update, which is where I go to bitbo.io to go over some Bitcoin stats. All right, so we're on block height 803,035. The price of one Bitcoin is trading at 29,235 US dollars. One US dollar will buy you 3,420 Satoshis. Satoshis are like the cents equivalent in Bitcoin, right? One dollar subdivides into 100 cents. One Bitcoin subdivides into 100 million Satoshis or sats for short. By the way, you can support the podcast with as little as one Satoshi if you listen to it with a podcasting 2.0 app such as Fountain, Breeze, or Podverse where you can have Satoshis or Bitcoin sent to me through the podcast wallet for listening to the podcast. Now, I understand that you might not have any Bitcoin, so that's totally fine. But if you'd like to play around with it and try it out, I just let me know and I'm more than happy to send you a few Satoshis to see how it works. All right, so as I already said in the intro, in the spoiler alert, the financial health advice is to learn as much as you can about Bitcoin. But before learning about Bitcoin, it's always good to learn about what the current system is, what it's like, and why Bitcoin fixes it, why it needs fixing, why is there even a problem, right? So the main thing to understand is what is fiat money, because that's what we use right now. I was having a conversation with a new friend who I was whom I was describing Bitcoin to, and When I mentioned the term fiat money, he actually didn't know it. So it's good to maybe go over it again on the podcast here. So fiat money refers to just any type of currency that has a value because a certain government or some sort of central authority declared it to be legal tender and they enforce its use for transactions within a specific jurisdiction. So it's different from commodity money, which like would be backed by a physical commodity like gold or silver. Fiat money is not 
backed by any physical asset, but it just derives its value from the trust and confidence of the people using it in the government that issues it. So essentially all money that's in use today is fiat money. And while it's useful and it does have certain advantages over commodity money, it has one major flaw that basically makes it completely not usable, or at least not over long periods of time. The fact is that there is no limit to the supply of fiat money. And so because of that flaw, there's a huge impact on the fact that there's constant inflation where the money supply is increasing indefinitely, which leads to the loss of value of the currency over time. So retirees, savers, people with fixed income, their savings are inflated away and they cannot keep up with the rising prices. And then that leads to financial instability and wealth inequality. But lucky for us, Bitcoin fixes this. Bitcoin has a hard cap supply of 21 million and it has a consensus mechanism that makes it very difficult for that to be changed. So the 21 million hard cap is here to stay forever unless everybody who is using Bitcoin simultaneously decides that it's okay to increase that hard cap, which is not going to happen. All right. As I said, I want to keep the podcast short this week. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate you all. Please leave a comment or send me a message at jmartfit at substack.com. You can also reach me through social media. I'm also on Noster. All the links are in the description. Love you all. Have a good week. Stay active. Be grateful. Jmart out.